South Africa and welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Jeannie D and welcome to the show. Today is absolutely jam-packed with beauty and grooming advice and we discuss a whole lot of cosmetic treatments that don't require you going under the knife. Awesome. We also give you some valuable male grooming tips. So if you're a guy or a girl who wants to spruce up your man's look, stay tuned. We have a competition to announce, so keep glued for that. And we catch up with Anton Jefter in our series today of Getting Under Your Skin. And to end it all off, we finish off with interior designer Adam Court, who is surely set to inspire some of you at home. But speaking about beauty, we also have a little furry friend with us in the kitchen, Danilo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, guys, welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm very and uh, much looking forward to seeing what happens with this male grooming stuff because it's one thing that I don't think I've learned very well But I must take a moment very quickly and I I must just say that Claire and myself have got some very big news um, We're about to put a bun in the oven <laughs> for 45 minutes and it'll come out looking absolutely <laughs> awesome I was really be, yeah, <laughs> and Claire was a bit worried so without wasting any more time We've got a bun to get in that oven uh, We're going to show people how to do that and not birds and the bees type We want to show them how to actually make a bun and put it in the oven It's the coconut and coconut milk time <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do we get started on this one Claire? Oh, okay, give me a moment <laughs> like, Calm down so from nervous. my like, panic attack <laughs> <Woo>. Okay <laughs> Okay, so what are you doing? Yeah, is we've just whisked up some of the eggs and the sugar. So nice and light and white and pale. Mm. You can see it's beautiful and fluffy. Let's just, let's just so see that. Beautiful. Wow, this, I'm just interested in this thing. It looks so cool. I must admit, tech. this mixer does, it is my nemesis, but okay. we'll, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we're going to do here is just add mm -hmm. some of the wet ingredients. So, I said it's a, a coconut custard bun, and um, this is the coconut Oof. part. So, we've got beautiful coconut milk, which we're going to mm -hmm. add. It's about, it's about three quarters of a cup. Let's just pop that in there. Just and then that that some side. melted butter. Do you want to mix that up with, for sure, me? Sure, with this thing. Yes, indeed. We're just mixing this up to combine it evenly so that it makes our life easier in the bowl over here okay. so that you don't have to whisk it or beat extra hard to get it to work. While you okay. do that, I'm going to add the yeast. What we've done with the yeast is just taken the hot water, warm water, not mm -hmm. hot, um, sprinkled the yeast over the top, and it just sort of starts to bubble and really activates, and you know that... Stuff is happening I here see. when and it looks like this. Smell it too. It is yeasty. Woo! So okay. that goes into. I was going to ask if it was you, but. Um, <coughs> <laughs> wow. Lisa knows <laughs> our ingredients. <laughs> no comments. No comments. Cool, okay, so you can pour that in there. So all of the wet ingredients go in there. Woo, I think I'm going to drop this and hold this properly. There okay, we go. do you want got me to take it. it from you? No, got it. Okay, like looking that. good. We're just going to give it a quick mix so that it's all combined. And we'll ask Carry on doing this. Yep. Okay, that's mixed up there. What you're going to do is start the filling. So okay. I'm going to get over, I'm going to finish off that dough so in a second. So the custardy part of the whole so thing. The, exactly. So Yum. custard, coconut. The mm. custard is really the egginess of it. So if you think of a custard, it's typically made with eggs, sugar, cream, milk, whatever you're doing. I didn't know it was typically made of anything, yeah. but okay, well, now I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, butter and sugar into the bowl, and you're going to cream cool. that up by hand. You don't get a mixer like Yay, me. Yeah, good. It's fine. And I don't mind. And light and pale, obviously, with time constraints, you know, I think I, I'm not even can. joking, but this morning was meant to be arms day, Jim, and I'm this gym today, so okay. this can be my arm workout. Well, somehow I knew this, so let's Eggs get going. Eggs as well? No, just the, oh, just just the, like okay. the butter and the sugar. Mm. So I'm going to add half the flour here, just so that we don't end up with a, a puff of flour. Just mix that in there. This is quite get hard to mix with, the, with um, one I of these whisks. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was going to be hard. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> I had planned puns for today's show, and you had planned exercise for us. <laughs> Okay, so that dough is going to just, it, it takes a while to come together and then you want to just knead it for about five or ten minutes just until it's nice and smooth and then you're going to leave that to rest. It's going to double in size, probably about 45 minutes to an hour, really, until it doubles in size. Cover it before you leave it to rest so that yes. it doesn't dry out on the top. I see. And then we'll, so you can see it's sort of coming together nicely. It is a slightly wetter dough okay. than your typical bread dough um, because it's going to be a light and fluffy type of see, so um, button. So like I always refer to it like the only dough I know how to make is pizza dough and it's very similar to that except that it is a lot softer and wetter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this okay. is typically comes from, sort of stems from a Japanese custard bun and it is a sweet, light, enriched bun yeah. that you really eat for tea. So it's not Lovely. a bun in the sense that you would know that you'd fill Put it with it something. something yeah. This already has the filling. You're going to have it with a nice cup of tea and enjoy it, like calmly on like a, what are we, Thursday afternoon? Thursday afternoon, yes. Okay, so in goes the eggs. Let's pop those in there. Cool. So I, you're doing a good job there. Oh, thanks. It's nice to get some compliments while you're in the kitchen. 
Why? I don't normally come to movie music. No, it's always like, you did that wrong, that's full there, but don't worry, I'll save you. I have no recollection of this. It's <laughs> always so nice in the kitchen. <laughs> that's a nice thing about having Afternoon Express on YouTube. I want to go back to those clips. I want to create a compilation <laughs> of all the times that I've messed up in the kitchen and make sure. Oh, you mean messed up, you. not I've told yeah, you messed yeah. up. Okay, I'm good you went okay, that Okay, cool. Way. Let's keep so adding So in goes the coconut. So about a cup of coconut. So some yummy Woolworths desiccated coconut in oh, there. Oh, that smell. I can eat coconut all day long. And then that's the filling. So that's just going to set aside until your dough is ready. So you can okay. just cover that in plastic. You know, you can leave it in the fridge if you're a bit nervous of your sort of eggs sitting out and whatnot. Yes. But just be mindful that there's a lot of butter in here. So if you put it in the fridge, it's going to sort of seize up. Okay. Take it back out, put it in, you know, get it back to room temperature, and then use it in your filling. So Amazing. that's going to sit. That's going to sit. And, and we'll show the rest later on. Amazing. So you guys can go to the website, afternoonexpress.co.za. That is exactly where you can find all the recipes and the ingredients for this recipe we're making on Afternoon Express today. It is an absolutely delicious one. It smells amazing. Anything with coconut is an absolute win for me. Now, after the break, we take a look at the latest trends in non-surgical cos cosmetic treatments, and we're sharing some valuable male grooming tips. So, ladies, if you're looking to clean up your man, then stay right where you are. Apply for a Nedbank home loan today and stand a chance to win 100,000 rands worth of home decor to help turn your new house into a dream home. Go to winnerhome.tv for more info. Let Nedbank help you make the things that really matter happen. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, when we talk about cosmetic surgery, the first thing that comes to mind is going under the knife. But with the rapid advancement of medical technology in the world, there are numerous non-surgical cosmetic treatments that can help you look and feel younger without the expense of bills and the health risks of surgery. Joining us on the couch to give insight into this ever-evolving industry is, is aesthetic physician, Dr. Anushka Reddy. Welcome. Thank you, Jeannie. Lovely you to be are here. the the most perfect billboard for everything that you do because you look magnificent. But you've been Thank in the you. industry for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You've literally done like over 10,000 treatments. How has cosmetic treatments changed over the past 15 years? Like are your clients getting younger? The more men. You know, we've noticed this, this trend towards the less is more. So definitely people want to look rejuvenated, but they really don't want to go under the knife anymore. They don't want the risk of anesthesia. They don't want the risk, uh, you know, the... The downtime. No one, everyone has such busy lives. What is downtime? Yeah, you don't have time we, for that. We, absolutely not. <laughs> so we're having this shift towards um, procedures that offer you fabulous results with none of the risks associated with surgery. And uh, yes, we are seeing a shift. I would say in the last five years, where more uh, young people are coming in. So it's more about preventative medicine rather okay. than waiting for the frown to develop and then coming in for a shot of Botox. Okay, but then Botox and fillers were really mm -hmm. popular for quite some time. Time. But nowadays, we're starting to see quite a few horror stories. I mean, look at Renee Zellweger, mm -hmm. Donatella Versace. Yes. I mean, what happened there? The, you, the, Do people have to panic a bit? You, you <laughs> Is know, their Botox going to drop an eye at some point? You know, in, in those particular instances, there could be a bit of surgery involved, uh, you yeah. know, in creating those type of faces. But I think specifically if we look at Renee, I would say she's had too much of Botox in the forehead. You yeah. can see a very smooth, very shiny forehead. The eyebrows are quite low. Um, so, you know, that that's where you have way too much. And she had the skin cut off her eyes. She had one yes. of those eye lifts. Yes, a blepharoplasty. And uh, it may be also a case where she came out too soon. You know, she didn't give her face and her body a chance to heal. Yeah. She pre presented a face to the world and obviously the media went crazy. Yeah. So it's very much that instance. Yeah, but Renee but Zellweg almost did need it because she always looked like she was going to cry, especially in Bridget Jones Bridget. when she had that little fat <laughs> face. And then immediately she <laughs> had these <laughs> wide open eyes. I mean, so it wasn't, you could, it was too obvious. It, it was. And, and that's why I say the less is more is very much in fashion at the moment because people want uh, other people to think they've just been on a holiday or they've just yeah. colored their hair uh, and they look, you know, relaxed and they can't quite pinpoint what it is yeah. that they've done. And that's where, that's what we're all about. Yeah, well, you know who is absolutely incredible if you look mm -hmm. at what's her name? Ashton Kutcher's ex, Demi Moore. Yes. Now, do you remember a couple of years ago, Demi Moore did this operation on her knees where she took all of the fat away from her knees to give yes. her, like, longer, slimmer legs. And every single time I uh -huh. saw her, I was like, oh, 
I just need to meet more knees. <laughs> so I believe you have something here that's going to give me those <laughs> wrinkle-free <laughs> knees. <laughs> Tell me all about this magic little machine. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't elongate the legs. Not yet. We will well, get magic. there. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at um, treating wrinkles. So we're looking at parts of the body, especially around the knees, around the belly button. Sometimes we have this loose, flabby skin, uh, you know, around the arms. Okay. So this device works beautifully in actually tightening the skin. Okay, so I'm not going under the knife, but I'm about to do a procedure <laughs> on live TV. So you're going to do my knees. Yes. But this can be done even on the face if somebody has Absolutely. intense wrinkling. Very Let much. the healing begin. <laughs> So it's, it's not a painful procedure. So you're going to be very relaxed and uh, it's all it's going to do, it's just heat the skin a bit. So the, the device is called the Venus Viva system okay. and it uses radio frequency. And what it does is that it would uh, heat the skin up to about 42, between 42 to 45 degrees. And, uh, and that, as we know, heat increases <gasps> collagen it's production. Like Okay, so you're going to increase so, the collagen in my knee yes. to take away all these wrinkles and yeah. smooth it up. That, that's the whole idea. So you probably would need about six to eight treatments. I know it's not a once-off, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, it's it's a fairly comfortable procedure as compared to the other radio frequency. Must I come closer to you? So yes, yes, there we go. There you go. That's it. Now, so we've, we've already looked at your knee, sorry, Jeannie, and uh, we've decided where the wrinkles yeah, are. Yeah, I even took before and after pictures for oh, those okay. of you at home. Because I'm a leg girl. I'm, I'm a complete leg girl. I mean, if the shorter the skirt, the shorter the shorts, <laughs> I just want legs. That's a picture so, of the before that I shot that we took earlier today. That's, that's my knee. What exactly is a hot-looking knee? And I want them to look even hotter. Okay, so... I'm so increasing we, the oh, energy. I'm a little bit nervous. What's it going to feel like? Oh, I'm nervous already. Okay. It's, it's, it's just going to be heat. So take a deep breath and we'll So start. you're going to warm myself in? Yes. <laughs> and there we go. Okay. So we're ready to start. Do, do it. And if it feels a bit too warm, please let me know. No, there's no such thing. The hotter, the thinner. Is that how it works? Because well, <laughs> <laughs> you I, can heat that I, thing I, right up. <laughs> I wish it was so easy. So this feels like nothing. Oh, good, good. <gasps> can you go all the way up? Oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> For five. So, <laughs> so you, you can, I'm keeping you, this little thing. <laughs> it, it's Whoa. a nifty little device. Can you feel that? Is it feeling a little it, bit warmer? It actually just feels like you're massaging my knee. Oh, you could okay. even apply pressure if you wanted to so that I could enjoy it. Ah. <laughs> You like the pain factor, huh? No pain, no gain, hey? I've got a very high pain threshold. I mean, I, I work here. <laughs> All right, so let's, let, let's increase the energy a bit. Yes. I see, you, you want to see results. I definitely want to see results. And really, will it be so noticeable? Okay, no, ah, that's great. Is I still that okay? feel good. Ah, okay. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've, it's I've more. increased it to maximum, so, so let me know. It, it's not meant to be at maximum, but I mean, you're tolerating it quite well. So... We can certainly... Amazing. Okay, so we're going to continue with this. I'm uh -huh. going to try and get Doctor ready to do the thighs and the aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, ah, there, there we go. go. There we go. But first, Danilo's on the couch with our next guest discussing male grooming. Indeed, but I can see the magazine headlines now. It's no longer going to be Genie D. It's going to be Genie Knee because you look so good. Well, while it's true that women find beat up jeans and tussled bedhead uh, incredibly sexy on a man, every guy needs a quick no-fail grooming routine that he can uh, turn to when he needs to impress. We have men's health grooming editor in the loft to chat about the importance and misconceptions of male grooming. It's really cool to have an expert finally join us in the loft because I think male grooming is something that people are very scared of and are very shy, uh, shy away from because, you know, it's not, it's not guyly to, you know, like pluck my eyebrows or, you know, like, shave my beard, bro. It's like, it's cool to have lots of hair and to be messy. What is our generation moving towards in terms of, like, male grooming? Are we becoming more of a feminine masculine? Yeah, I think uh, why guys firstly find it a big concern maybe to um, experiment with grooming products or grooming regime, it's, it tests their masculinity. Ah. But in, I think mm. in today's generation and with uh, male grooming evolving so quickly and fast, that we are becoming self-aware mm. and first impressions last. True. It, 
whether you're going on a first date, a big interview, you really want to make mm. a good first impression. And that's when you have to start exactly. having a grooming regime. And there's so much available to you so that if you're not grooming, it's automatically assumed that you don't really know much about your own skin or your own body, which is, which is <coughs> I think, something that a lot of men need to start learning more about. So yeah, exactly. there are three things that I wanted to ask you. The biggest misconceptions that men have yeah. about male grooming, because it's not about looking like a girl. It's not about that. Exactly. So look, there's, there's quite a few misconceptions. The first I could think of is when it comes to shaving, people think the more they shave or the often they shave, yeah. that their hair will grow back stronger and faster. Unfortunately, it's untrue. Is that not true? No, it's not true. Um, if you want to sport a hipster-like beard or you want an impressive facial hair and uh, obsessively shaving, it's just going to cause razor burn. Okay, so it's nothing think, to do with actual hair follicles itself yeah, or the exactly. hair. Yeah, exactly. So oh, okay. rather just stop doing that. I see. And then the um, second one on the radar is darker skin don't get sunburned. That's okay. also untrue. <laughs> Even though darker skin do have a bit more uh, melanin than lighter mm. skin, and which provides a small protection against the UV rays of the mm. sun, it's still not enough. True. There are, will be times you're going to be in the sun for longer periods of time. Exactly. So you need proper protection. Yeah. And I've, I've also heard a lot of gents talk about oily skin. Like if you have oily skin, it means that your skin's healthy, it's working properly, it doesn't need no. moisturizer. Is that not no, true? No, it's not true. Oh. I mean, you're going to end up looking like a grease monkey. <laughs> so I think you should definitely... Grease moist... lightning was a thing at some point. Why not <laughs> exactly. grease monkey? Why not? But um, you need to moisturize. You need to find a formula that's suitable for your skin skin type, okay. so, uh, especially for oily skin, and there are loads of products on the market yeah. which is locked in the moisture and you will look refined and fresh. Oh, amazing. So in terms of those sort of routines that we're speaking about, you know, uh, recently we did something on my skin, we're talking about my, my regimes and, yes. and sort of how well do I cleanse, etc. Yes. What would be an ideal kind of uh, routine? Um, I think the best routine, especially if you're not a guy that grooms a lot, is start in the shower. Start cleansing your face in the shower. It's quick and it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, you can also follow it with exfoliating scrub, basically using circular motion so you get that sand grain-like um, product evenly spread on your skin. Mm -hmm. And the scrub also frees you from ingrown hair, ingrown hair, sorry, and dead skin cells ah. and just moisturize afterwards. Good plan. So it starts in the shower. It does. And I think it's one and of those it's, routines... It's, you save time as well. Exactly. So it's easy. So in terms of male grooming, let's go back to this sort of topic because what does that encapsulate? I mean, men must be thinking, what does that mean that I must now... Yeah, what, what exactly does male grooming incorporate? It just means to look better after yourself. The same you're going to take after your car or you want to... You, you go to gym a lot, you want to look great with your six pack, mm -hmm. it's just you want to look presentable as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, we're in the generation where social media takes over, you want to do that perfect selfie, I mean, you just want to look good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, why not add a, gro a proper grooming regime into your routine? Okay, so that includes things like? Face, uh, face wash, cleanse your face, uh -huh. at least if, you, if you're just starting out, at least try it once again. Once okay. a day, cleanse and moisturize is very, very important. And also try and opt for moisturizer, yeah. the moisturizer containing an SPF. Okay, but that, it's that's so much better, especially in the summer. But you can use it uh, yeah. throughout the year. That'll look after your skin, I think, as a sort of treatment and stuff. Yeah, which... of course, it protects you against mm. the UV rays from the sun. It also protects you against anti-aging. So I mean, get rid of all those wrinkles. Speaking of which, Jeannie, how's it going over that side? I'm feeling skinnier already. So how's the treatment working? So, as you can see, the knees are quite, the one knee is quite red. Yeah. We've got your temperature up to almost 40 degrees. Okay, so what so, does that mean? That my blood vessels have now actually been yes. heated up to 40 degrees? Not your blood vessels, it's the skin. So we want the skin to heat up because with heat in the skin, you produce more collagen which is what yeah. we want, because it's the collagen that's actually going to support the loose skin. Yes. So we're getting there, slowly but surely. Do you know what? The, the most beautiful people in the world, I find, uh, are the kindest people in the mm. world. So today I feel really generous, and since I'm getting all these amazing treatments, I think it's only fair that Danilo should be given a few treatments as well. And in fact, I've gotten the amazing men from Sorbet Man to assist me with this. Come on, gentlemen, how are you? So handsome. What are they and going Danilo, to do? Aha. we've got you a little grooming tip as well. Oh no, what are you guys going to be doing? Oh, I don't see. <laughs> Let's see, we're going to be threading those eyebrows, I think. Threading eyebrows? Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't even know come what on, it is. Come what on. What is threading, people? So, threading pretty much, it's um, the removal of the hair on the face, right? 
we're not using wax, we're not using any chemicals on the, on the face, so you're gonna get no reaction. It's just by done with a simple thread, okay? It's a bit of a... It's a bit of an like action to it. Neat and tidy and quite shaped. Yeah. Can I just state something? Yeah. State something right now. I've <laughs> never touched my eyebrows in my life before, so I've never plucked or anything in my eyebrows before. This can't be a priority for men. Um, well, that's if you do suffer of sporting a unibrow. You need to then. So you're saying I'm a unibrow? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> but I mean, if you do have a unibrow or you have unwanted hair, you need to go through to roots like oh my gosh. threading or plugging, yeah. etc. Well, while well, this happens, let's yeah, make you comfortable. Do. Okay, let's make you comfortable. Get your cool. head there. Okay. Let's get you back there. So this is what happens in the store. And oh everything. gosh. Okay, make them comfortable while they're busy discussing this. I want to know what the other priorities are in terms of male grooming. Yeah, the other priorities are, yeah, you do that. first, what they're busy doing is get rid of unwanted um, eyebrow so hair, like a unibrow, so don't sport that. that. And oh, no, God, no. <laughs> no, If you're no, a yeah. DIY you guy, kind of guy, you can do it yourself. Don't worry, it won't hurt. I won't mean, it's hurt. a painless experience. Lies. Why are they having to rub me normal. with alcohol if it's not meant to hurt? It's just to cleanse a bit of the skin, you know? I need some in my body, not in my <laughs> eyebrows, if this is what I'm going to go and do. Okay. Brace yourself. <laughs> do real Relax. men pluck their eyebrows? Just re yeah. um, well, it's an, um, real not men necessarily... Thread. Real men thread their eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, no, this, no, this sounds painful, people. <laughs> no, I don't it's not painful, this. trust me. I don't real think I can do this. Oh, it's not, just gosh. relax. Just chill. There we go. Ah! <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's fun. <laughs> Yo, that is really painful. It's not, it's, it's not, it's the sound that freaks me out. It's the sound of the thread touching the thread that I think is really, yeah. really interesting. Yo! So they'll neatly shape no, guys, your please, eyebrows. I don't want neat, I don't want like crazy shaped no. eyebrows. No, no, no. You see, so what he can do is he can just kind of like, just remove that little Oof. unibrow in the center, you know, just kind yeah. of like okay. open up the Keep eyebrows. Keep it quite yeah. Genie, Genie. you're so needy. <laughs> That's Listen, shop, I'm eh? not needy, darling. Let's These knees are on fleek. <laughs> now, ladies, if your man is sporting a moustache for November, he will definitely need to groom it throughout the month. Oh, moustache and beard care, beard care is absolutely, absolutely necessary. Now, remember that Clicks is a Mo Grow supporter, so keeping your man's Mo in tip-top shape with regular grooming is easy. But that's not all. Clicks are giving you the chance to win one of two men's grooming houses to the value of 1,000 Rand each. Filled with Clicks products including Vidal Sassoon and Sun Protect. And all you have to do is SMS the keyword Clicks, your name and city to 33728 and you could be one of our two lucky winners. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50 each. T's and C's apply. Visit afternoonexpress.co.za to find them. And after the break, we get under the skin with the incredibly well-groomed actor, Anton Jepta. Express yourself. Clicks. Feel good, pay less. Express yourself. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, SABC3. In today's Getting Under the Skin session, we catch up with actor, model and singer Anton Jefter. Now, you may recognize him from his guest appearances on international TV series, or you may better know him as the good-looking insurance guy. I'm a Cape Town based actor. I've been living here for most of my life. Most people in South Africa know me for my commercial work, most notably for an insurance company that most people know about. And um, my international credits are for Homeland. I've also done a couple of episodes on Dominion. Other shows include like Strike Back, Jamila and Aladdin. So yeah, I've been trying to do as much international work locally as possible. I come from an area called Belhar and my parents are still out there and um, it has been an interesting journey for me, especially now going to the US and people recognize me there for international jobs that I've been on. Sometimes it's a little bit almost overwhelming and unreal that I've come from these areas and um, now I'm being recognized on a greater sort of platform and, and bigger stage. I live quite an active life, so I really need to be on top of taking care of my skin. Um, I wash my face twice a day, I moisturize daily, and I exfoliate twice a week as well. Um, like I said, like the, I think the more active you are, the more on top of that things you need to be, because I break out if I don't take care of my skin. Also, like even like being in the sun, the sun out here is quite harsh. I usually use an SPF also with most things that I, that I, that I put on my skin as well. 
I've definitely had skin care issues. I mean, my skin is not nearly not close to perfect. And um, when I was 13, 14, I used to get all these like Okad pimples on my forehead. And I had some of the boys in the grade make fun of me because of that. And um, I also have bigger pores around the nose and I get some oily skin sometimes. So I really have my problem areas that I know I need to have my hand over. I've never had eczema or, or any major skin issue, uh, but I do know my sister used to suffer with it quite a bit, my older sister. And uh, my dad used to try all these household traditional remedies to, to ensure that it goes away. But I recall nothing helped, like nothing helped back then. He used to put like banana peels on her arms and, and try all these sorts of things. And, and it was quite annoying for her because it's quite itchy and it's a little bit embarrassing because she was in school back then and she had like, she'd always want to cover it up. My ultimate dream would be to just be like an ultimate role model to kids that come from similar backgrounds to what I come from and uh, just show them that it's like that it can be done and that like I sound so cliche but anything is really really possible. Groundbreaking treatment for acne. Wow, I can't say I've ever enjoyed an insurance ad quite like those ones Anton Jeff does. In. <laughs> Joining me in the laugh to talk about eczema is Dr. Dilshad Asma, a dermatologist. Welcome back, doctor. Thank you for having me. Now, 10% of the population suffers from atopic eczema. What is it and how does it develop? Well, first of all, eczema, there are lots of types of eczema. Right, and eczema in Greek means boiling over. But when oh. you think about eczema, you always think about the atopic eczema variety. And that's the one where you think of children having eczema in their flexures, which is in the in inner aspects behind of the elbows their legs, and behind yeah. their knees. Yeah. So that is the common picture that we have. And there's an acute form of it where it looks wet and weepy. And then there's a chronic form where it looks cracked and dry and lichenified or like leather. And atopic eczema can be part of what I call a triad. And a triad will be a combination of atopic eczema, asthma, and allergic rhinitis or hay fever. And what you're finding here is that there's a complex interaction between genetic factors and environmental factors to give you the skin condition. Wow, speaking of the environment, we live in a very stressful environment this day and age. How does stress affect eczema? Well, stress affects the whole body, and the skin is part of the body. So stress creates this inflammatory cascade, and as a result of this, you will get an eczema flare. Wow. And in this day and age where we are into instant gratification, we want to try something new today, and we want to see results in 24 hours, can eczema be treated in this way, and where does Dermalex come in? Well, first of all, there's no quick fix in dermatology. Oh. Right? <laughs> Not at all. And eczema... Anywhere, really. <laughs> eczema basically is a chronic condition. And doctors and dermatologists can definitely help treat the condition, but we can't cure it. So what you're looking for in a moisturizer is you're looking for an emollient that definitely moisturizes the skin. You're looking for a product that is anti-inflammatory, and tries to repair the barrier functioning of the skin. And you're looking for an, a product that contains an important factor called ceramides. Now, okay. ceramides are found in the top layer of skin, epidermis. But think about the epidermis as even having an outermost layer called the stratum corneum. And this stratum corneum is about the tenth of the size of a piece of paper. Now, in the stratum corneum, we have lipids called ceramides, and these ceramides help with the skin barrier functioning, and it prevents chemicals from entering the skin, and it prevents the water from leaching out. Oh. And scientists have actually proven that if you have a decreased amount of ceramides in the skin, you're more prone to atopic eczema. Wow. So, I mean, would you have to use this product for a prolonged period of time or can you stop at any given point and actually cure the eczema forever? Well, first of all, your main line of therapy would be drugs. Yes. And with drugs, I call um, topical steroids and steroid sparers, which are new generation drugs. These creams are helping hands, mm. right? And as I mentioned before, they integral to actually help maintain the structure and the barrier of defects the of the skin. 
Wow. Anyone watching at home who struggles with eczema, what can they do practically? Well, try and avoid your triggers. Mm -hmm. So your trigger may be your chemical irritants, and food may play a role in some patients, right. like egg, soya, peanuts. Try not to bath in very hot water, rather mm. tepid or lukewarm. When you are doing so, use non-fragrance, unscented soaps okay. and soap-free cleansers. If you're swimming, because it's going to be summer and we're going to be swimming a lot, shower immediately post-swim and moisturize. Right, right. Try and wear clothes that are cotton or smooth fabrics, nothing that will that irritate irritates. the skin. Mm -hmm. They're also talking about probiotics as being an aider in eczema. So I tell all my patients to be on probiotics. And I also do a lot of what I call bleach baths. Mm. And these have been found to help with eczema. Okay. Also, cut your nails short. Right. It may sound so ridiculous, but then you're not scratching, scratching. and causing trauma right. to your skin. Right. And in babies, a good idea is for them to wear gloves. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor. You always give us great insight. Thank you for having me. Awesome. If you're watching with us, why not join in the discussion on Facebook and Twitter at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag, hashtag Dermalex Eczema, where we want to know how you're managing to your eczema. And after the break, we chat to renowned interior designer, Adam Court. So if you're looking for inspiration to spice up your home space, then stay right where you are. Groundbreaking treatment for eczema for adults. Give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas. Are you with us? Welcome back to what has been such a fun episode of Afternoon Express. I hope you guys have been tuned in from the beginning because I think my eyebrows are starting to, to burn at the moment. So if you see some blood dripping from my eyebrows, you know where it's coming from. Oh, okay. Discussing male grooming. But we won't let that interfere with the dish we're making right here in the kitchen. I so a little bit jealous. I didn't get anything. Yeah, you need it. Mm, uh -huh. Maybe you can massage my hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd rather make a bun and put that in the oven. So we've got to get this done nice and quick. We've done most of the prep work, so what's yes, next? Okay, so we just taken some of our dough, just rolled it out over here, just portion out your dough sort of evenly, so it'll probably make like eight to ten little buns. Okay. This is one of them, we just roll it out, and you're going to take some of that mixture that we made earlier. Cool. And I'm just going to kind of flatten it out. It's a little bit tricky. Is that too much? That is definitely Way too much. Way too much, okay. So you think of it this way, that mixture kind of has to be spread amongst your ten, eight to ten buns. So oh, let's okay. take a little bit off. Yes. I'm actually going to use my fingers, I think it's going to be much easier. They are clean. And just kind of spread it out, just looking for sort of an even coverage of your, your bun. You don't have to get too precious about okay, this, yeah, it'll be fine. Because it is going to be rolled into itself, so it's kind of fine. Exactly, so oh, roll see. this in like this. What this is going to do, just dust off any like major flour, because otherwise it stops it from sticking. It's like you're making a cannelloni more than you're making... It's kind of like, think of like a croissant. You know how you get those beautiful yes. kind of layers in the mm. middle, like as it pulls apart? Ooh, that's yum. what we're doing there. But we're just kind of sealing it in like that. Cool. And then roll it out again. Just to kind of flatten it, seal it all in together. I so see. the mixture's like gone, disappeared. I see. So it just kind of gets straight into the dough there. Yes. Then you and fold then you it up. Fold it all back up onto each other. It's okay if sort of oh, a few word. of it pops out. And you kind of tuck it in. Just like that. Mm, you make this look so easy, Claire, but really doing, everyone at home is going like, oh, I'm get up. I'm, I'm they put their utensils <laughs> down, they're done. Everyone's like, oh, I don't know what's going on. I'm doing it very fast, but you're just really, really just trying to tuck all that filling in okay. and sort of encase it in that little guy. Oh, amazing. And that goes into your grease tin. Okay. And you just continue and continue and continue. And then, ta-da! That has to go in the oven, obviously, right? Oh, it has yes, to bake. Right. Yeah, that would help. So 45 right. minutes at? 45 minutes at about 180 to 200 degrees. You want to kind of puff it up and get it nice and golden. If it starts okay. getting too brown, too fast, turn it down. So let's mm. say start at 200, take it down to 180. Okay. And just watch it, about 45 minutes. A good tip is kind of kind of tap, tap it. on it. It's, it's been out of the oven outside. a little while to cool down now, but like it kind of crunches on the outside. Cool. And then we just, my hands are a bit flowery now, but I'm so excited, I'm Go gonna pull it, some yeah. apart. So you just, just pull them out and you're gonna plate them quite nicely, I suppose, just kind of, oh, there no, we go, they just break like, off. Just little, like, tea Amazing. Bun. It's they a delicious thing to make. So if you guys really wanna get this recipe, afternoonexpress.co.za is where you can find it. Your bun is finally out of the oven and she's overjoyed, isn't she? Sorry, Claire Wynn Sally right here in the kitchen. <laughs> but if you're not making a bun in the oven this evening, here's what you can check out on SABC3.
I start off every morning exercising and eating healthy. And today is just gonna be like any other day. I'm gonna finish it off eating all that bread. <laughs> but make sure you tune in for Top Billing later this evening at 7.30 right here on SABC3. Roxy visits the three finalists of Winner Home, the design edition, and they take her on a tour around the three luxury apartments situated in Umschlange Rocks, getting a glimpse of how they have literally injected their personality into the designs. Queen Bee herself, catches up with Pharrell Williams as he spends some time on set for a very special Christmas photo shoot in London with three brave children who've received hearing operations. They also attend the wedding of Graham Jenica and Erin Aronser and spend time with the couple's closest friends as they relax before the big day. They also find out how the two met and where it all started from their first kiss at the age of 13 to becoming high school sweethearts. For now though, Let's join Danilo on the couch. Where others see empty spaces, Valant see opportunity. After identifying a definite need for a specialized interior design division, Valant recently launched Valant Spaces to conceptualize and conceive unique interiors that reflect and evolve the personal vision of their clients. Under the guidance of rock star interior designer Adam Court, a highly skilled and professional team of designers and decorators create bespoke interiors and tailored furniture pieces for the residential, commercial and hospitality sectors. Very cool to have you in the loft with us today though, Adam. It's really, really inspiring to see the work that you are doing. Give us a quick, a quick like background as to what you've been up to over the last few months. Last few months or last few years? Whatever, it makes you feel um, happy. Basically, I this year has been a very, very kind of like year of change. Mm. Uh, in February of this year, I resigned from my previous practice. Good times, um, great, great experiences there. And you just kind of reach a point whereby you... Want to do you your own wanna thing. Do your own thing. You want to explore new avenues. You want to express yourself in different ways. Mm. And um, this is the year for it. So Favorite yeah. project to have worked on so far? Um, I did a great project in Johannesburg uh, last year, which was a fantastic, great client. I've done three projects for that client. It was an amazing concrete building mm. in Johannesburg. And um, I was pretty much left to my own devices uh, after having worked with that client on three occasions. And um, it was just almost sort of fulfilling your own sort of personal wish list, which mm. was amazing. So, so that sort of sparked the destiny of you moving out onto your own. But there's this big collaboration that you've just gone about now that we're speaking about today, your collaboration with Valance and yeah. with Valance Spaces. How did that all come about? Well, I think once I'd kind of become an independent agent, I yeah. kind of took stock and thought, well, what do I want to do? Yeah. Um, who do I want to work with? Who's out there? Who's interesting? Mm -hmm. Who do I find exciting in terms of individuals and companies? And um, Valence came, came to mind. I literally picked up the phone and said, hey, Chris, do you want to have a coffee, have a chat? Let's, you know, let's talk. Mm. So it literally came about like that. It literally was me saying, I've got this time on my hands. I've got time to think and evaluate the directions I want to move in, what I want to do in terms of projects, sure. who I want to work with. And his name kind of like shot to the top of the list. So for people who are trying to get their sort of buildings, whether it be commercial, residential, uh, to go somewhere unique, they would love to have a name like yours behind it, I think. And this is what's so valuable about the spaces that they've created. Adam, something like this has a lot of legs on it, I'm sure. What is the plan in future with you in this collaboration? It's an interior design division. I mean, it's a conceptual design division. We come up with narratives, stories, conceptual ideas for interiors, whether they be um, residential, corporate, the hospitality trade, hotels and uh, restaurants. And it's really just about working and picking and choosing the very, very best of those projects because we want to you know, create unique interiors for unique projects. So like I said, first of all, it looks like we're going to be doing um, the Bush Lodge uh, and then we'll see where else it takes us. But we're, you know, we're, we're here. We've got a great, great, great team that we've put together and um, we're ready to get to work. Sure, I think a lot of people are going to become flocking for this because, I mean, everyone wants to have their houses looking so beautiful and the work that you do is incredible. Yeah. But there must be some kind of entry criteria to receiving the service. How does it go about, how do you go about actually receiving services from something like <coughs> Valence Spaces? You've got, I mean, I would evaluate the project, meaning are we the appropriate designer for what the client wants to achieve. It's not a decorator service. Yes. It is a conceptual design practice. Sure, so where you see opportunities <laughs> for some great uh, like ideas and creativity, so you'll pick up the project. Yeah, I mean, we want to express something. The client wants to express something. It's about this conversation that takes place, this dialogue, and achieving an incredible interior, an incredible wow. result at the end. 
And this is brand new, right? This is a service that wasn't offered before. No. I mean, I mean when I met with Chris, you know, I said to him, why haven't you done this? <laughs> and uh, to me, it was a, la a logical progression. I mean, yeah. you've got all of these resources, you've got all of these kind of like logistics at hand. Mm. You've got an incredible catalog. Why haven't you done this before? And he just said, timing, the right people, the right mm. person. Mm. And I said, well, you know, let's, let's, let's see how we can make this happen. I mean, sure. I, th I think it's incredible what you've built so far. Yeah. This will just take it, you know, to another level. Sure, both brilliant yeah. brands. I mean, your own, your sort of designs are, are, are renowned and so is Valence when it comes to their sort of products. So I think it's a great relationship that you guys have created together. A lot of designers hate this question, but any final words of advice for somebody just sitting at home wanting to redecorate their house? Um, I hate trends. I hate that kind of idea of trends, but it's about creating a personal space, something that is a reflection of you, something that resonates who you are. Um, spoil yourself. Don't take shortcuts. And you're creating a space that is there for the next 5, 10, 15 years, potentially. So, you know, um, get professional uh, help and advice. Um, don't cut corners. And think about what it is you want to say about yourself. Who are you? What do you want to, ex what do you want to say? Use your design to help you express that. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Adam Court, for joining us in The Loft. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Well, there you go, South Africa. Some wonderful insights from an industry heavyweight and some great advice there for those willing to go at it alone. For the rest of us, though, it's never been easier to bring in the professionals. After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. Today, we're talking about pamper parties. Now, if you don't know what that is, I suggest you stay tuned. I've also made a couple of jugs of iced tea, this one using orange flavored tea, and this one is spicy exotic chai iced tea. My friends love it, and we love it because we know exactly what's gone into it, and it's so much healthier for us. We'll be right back. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, before the break, Bonnie mentioned that we're talking about pamper parties. So I'm sure you're all asking, what on earth is a pamper party? Well, it's really quite simple. It's about the girls getting together every now and then to enjoy some pampering, which can be so much more fun in the comfort of your own home. And if you're like me, you're always looking for great ideas to bring the girls together. So we thought we'd get the experts to share some party planning ideas with you so that you can try it at home. In the loft with us is Tracy Branford from Trunk Events and Tove de Chazelle from Fox Box Mobile Nails. We've asked them to give us some insight into the background of pamper parties and what pamper goodies are out there so that we can be sure to bring some new and exciting ideas to the party. Welcome to the Laugh Ladies. <laughs> Hi, Hi ladies. Hi. So tis the season to be pampered. Where do we even start if we want to plan a pamper party or, yeah, like... Where yeah, do we even begin? Just hang out with the girls and look after ourselves. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, what we I love to do best. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> I think it's important, as you mentioned, to do a pamper party at home. Yeah. Um, and coming from planning and an events background, I would definitely round up the girls, find a date that suits everyone, and ask them to bring along some of their favourite products or some of the products that they've seen out there and haven't tried. If everybody brings a different product along, then I think that's the first start, you know. Find yeah. the date, find the venue, make sure the room is mellow, make sure that the vibe's right, have some tea, have some snacks, have yeah. the right music, some fragrance candles, yeah. and then you explore the products that you want at the party, yeah. I actually went to one that was so amazing, and this girl had a high tea at her home, mm -hmm. and then what she did was, she gave, um, when everyone left, we got a little bracelet, and attached to the bracelet was like a little piece of paper that said <laughs> the best place to get a spray tan, the best place no, to go and have your amazing. eyelashes done, oh, wow. the best place to do wow. Botox or whatever <laughs> whatever she needed to get herself <laughs> looking in tip-top condition, she wrote on this list. Well, you're bringing the bracelets to our next pamper party, yeah. okay? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> summer's here and we all want our feet to look amazing because we'll be hitting the beach in a big yes. way. And hands. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, I, mean, I think that's where we come in and that's what we do. So we um, specialise in pamper parties. We send a fleet of our fabulous foxes to your home or to your hotel, whether you're getting married or it's your bachelorette or kitchen tea or a girl's night in or basically an excuse, any excuse for girls to get together and drink, whether it be tea or champagne or whatever it is. Um, and we send our fleet of girls in and, you know, we do your feet and we do your hands and, you know, all the season's latest trends and it's just a great way to spend time with the girls. 
instead of having to go out and actually do it at home and really catch up and spend some time together. Yeah. And whatever awesome. gets said at the pamper party stays, stays, stays at, like at the pamper party. party. It always stays. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about what are the season's trends, what are uh, the season's trends in nails? Well, you know what? This season, um, white nails are huge. This I season. love white nails. I know. Yes. Me too. Yes. It's about time they made a comeback. I always so, yeah. they're going to get so dirty quickly. No, they don't. If you do gel, so obviously your uh, long last polish, you're yeah, okay. Yeah. So white nails are all the trend this season. Also with a beautiful like foil strip. So you add a little bit of nail art. Yeah. Ooh. yeah, it's gorgeous. A like foil a strip like where you would do the French manicure yeah. strip. Either there Ooh. or just one line down. So okay. like just a line across the side and you do one finger, signature finger. So it's not too flashy, but you're yeah. drawing a little bit of attention. Ooh. So that's very I'm fabulous. Need a fox to do some foils. <laughs> 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 and then all your pinks and reds are also very big this season. You know, your classic colours. And I think, you know, with hitting the beach when it comes to keeping those feet in good condition. Um, you know, the sand is the perfect exfoliator. You really true. don't need more yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, true, so yeah. spend some time on the beach, yeah. exfoliate those feet and just make sure those toes are nicely polished. And Absolutely. our hands, just, you know, making sure they're not dry, making sure yeah. we don't get burnt in the yeah, sun. Yeah, a nice moisturiser, a nice sunscreen. You know, I think there's so many products out there and you can get so overwhelmed with this and that. Yeah, I think it really absolutely. depends on what your skin wants whether you go organic or whether you want a little bit of an anti-aging, you know, the first place a woman ages is the hands. So it's really somewhere you do want to hit if you, yeah, if you are it's starting to. Yeah, hours driving, I agree. Yeah. Carry yeah. hand cream in your bag. That's exactly. Definitely so, so all yeah. of that kind of stuff, I think. Yeah. But it's, it's, I always say, whatever works for you, whatever floats exactly. your boat. Um, but, you know, with season, I think just, just get those fingers and yeah. toes yeah. looking very fabulous and colourful. Yeah. So if you have to give us top tips like do's and don'ts, what are the top tips to remember? When planning a pamper when party. planning a pamper party. Invite the fun girlfriends. <laughs> Definitely get them involved. The we crazy only ones. have yeah, fun. The, the crazy, crazy girlfriends. Ones. Yeah, make sure they don't bring their kids along. I mean, I have Ooh, a strict yeah. rule about please don't bring oh, kids. Yeah. See. I mean, it's all about pampering. It's about calming down. Yeah, you can't yeah. relax yeah. if you've yeah. got your De kids running De-stressing, uh, which, which re-energizes you. Um, Definitely have some bubbles after the tea, but start with tea. I think tea relaxes line the stomach, you. Line, line the, the tummy. Stomach. Yeah. yeah. Food. And um, yeah, make sure that you have the right aromas in the room. I think, you know, work with beautiful candles, beautiful That's tea, ar tip. aromatic yeah. tea, yeah. you know, aromatic creams. I'm yeah. sure you can suggest yeah, some, but yeah. Beautiful it's all smells. about smells and the ambience and having fun. Life's a party. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming through to our loft and telling us how to throw the perfect pamper party. We will no be doing problem. that this season. Absolutely. Thank you so thank much you. for making thank such a good tea. It's yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, and you know, very delicious. Tea. A girl can never have enough tea variety no, in her house. <laughs> so uh, I've got a green tea for oh, all little, of us. Take, little, little take love away green oh, tea. Love a good green tea. Thank you so much. And then so here much. I've got a more classic one, English breakfast. Thank, thank, you, so much. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies. <laughs> thank you so Thanks. much for joining us. Now stand the chance to win a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing a range of delicious orange, lemon and chai tea flavours. SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city, to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 each and T's and C's apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, I hope we've inspired you to enjoy a pamper session with your friends. And until next time, remember, nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. And mm. Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> and you today. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Well, that's it for us right here on Afternoon Express. Our bundle of joy is out of the oven. Our bun is out of the oven. We're going to cuddle that. Thanks to all of our guests for joining us on the show. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow, 4 to 5, right here on Afternoon Express. Good night. Happy eating. Let's get some butter on here. Mmm. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.